All right, well, welcome everybody. So glad to have you along. Yes, and sprouted cereal. Lovely soaked oatmeal chia seeds. That sounds delicious. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I am Megan Stevens with eatbeautiful.net. Um, my um, blog focuses on healing and whole foods and my health food journey and everything I've learned along the way as far as supplements and different approaches to wellness. Um, so my blog has lots of recipes and it also has lots of articles on healing and different approaches to healing as well as supplements. Um, if you're not already following me on Periscope, you can do that. My handle is at Meg Eat Beautiful. Someone says no bacon. We had bacon actually last night for dinner. I made a lovely cream of celery soup with fresh basil and bacon and it was so good. Um, so, and if you would like to follow me on YouTube, the replays of these videos are always there. My YouTube channel is Megan Stevens. All right, so today we are going to talk about hydrotherapy, and this has been um, a practice we've used in our own home for a couple years. Uh, my doctor up in Vancouver, Washington introduced me to it, and it's something that has helped us. And I also want to talk about some different ways of doing hydrotherapy because um, it can actually be very daunting for people either because of the temperature of the water or because it's kind of a pain in the neck. So let's look at all of it. First of all, I just want to say hydrotherapy, hydro of course means water, is very historical, going back literally thousands of years. So we see the Roman culture using it with their bathhouses. We see the Greeks using it, the Egyptians using it. Um, it was a Bavarian monk who originally came up with a lot of the specific ways of doing hydrotherapy for healing his patients that are actually still used to this day. The reason that my naturopath uses it is he tends to use more old-fashioned naturopathic techniques, um, and this is one of the main approaches he uses with pretty much all of his patients um, for various ailments, which we'll talk about. Um, we also see um, the, the um, Chinese and Japanese cultures using um, bathhouses and different forms of hydrotherapy, and then, of course, the Native Americans. My husband lived up in Alaska for several years, and the Native people were still using, um, like, essentially sweat lodges, and they would go into these small rooms, especially the men, um, you know, half naked would sit in these, these sweat lodges together for a good long time and sweat out their impurities, and then they would run through the snow and go jump in the river. And that is serious hydrotherapy because you're in hot, and then you shock your body with the cold. So... Most of us don't have the option, and if we did, we would not do that. Especially as we get old, cold temperatures are very uncomfortable. Have you ever noticed that children are happy to go get in the ocean and the cold temperatures are no big deal to them? They jump in the swimming pool for swim lessons. And we as adults, most of us are much more timid, much less likely to be willing to do that. So when a practitioner suggests we do something like hydrotherapy that um, involves very cold towels on the torso, most of us are very hesitant. In fact, many of my clients are completely unwilling to do it, or they do it for a short time and just say, I can't, I can't deal with that. And yet it has so much merit. There are so many healing properties to this technique. So I'm going to first share with you um, probably the hardest technique, but it's very effective. It's very worth mentioning. And some of you may be interested in doing it. Um, and then I'm going to share with you several variations on that as well. Um, so first, let's talk about what cold and hot water do on the body, okay? Cold water stimulates the body by constricting blood vessels and restricting blood flow to slow inflammation. It also sends blood towards the internal organs to make them function more efficient, efficiently. And this is what I'm going to circle back on and talk about more. Um, hot water dilates blood vessels, relaxing the body, increasing blood flow, and sending it to the skin and muscles to ease stiffness. Using hot and cold water together can boost hormonal function, improve circulation, and once again, activate organ function. Okay, so um, when I first went to my doctor, really doing quite unwell, had adrenal fatigue and all these other things, he said I was basically like a dead battery. And I've talked before about um, energy treatments and grounding, which is one of the main techniques he used on me, but he also used hydrotherapy. So um, I was told to go home and to implement this technique for three weeks, five nights a week, um, for three weeks. And what I had to do, and it works really well if you have a partner to help you. So um, my husband helped me, and actually even my kids helped me. 
depending on who was home in the evenings. It was just something we were dedicated to doing. You can do this alone, and I'll talk about that technique in just a second. So you don't have to have someone, but if you do, it certainly helps. So what you do is you get um, two towels, and it's ideal if you can have towels that go from the top of your shoulder down to um, kind of like your pelvic bone area, so large hand towels for the bathroom, bigger than a dish towel, and you get them wet. Um, one you get wet with very hot water, one you get wet with cold water. The cold water one, I like to put it on a cookie sheet and slide it into the refrigerator. And this is just my own, um, I've done a lot of hydrotherapy now, so we've sort of figured out techniques that work. The other option is you have a little igloo cooler and you want to put that next to your bed. Um, you can put the cold one in the igloo cooler and keep it cold that way. And then you line your bed with a towel or whatever is going to make it waterproof. Your, your towels that you're using on top of your body are wrung out, so they're not dripping wet at all. But they're, it's possible that a little moisture could get on the towel. So I line my sheet with a towel. And then you have to be naked. So you just have your underwear on and down can have clothes, but your upper part's naked. And you put the hot towel on your upper body for five minutes. And you drape over that hot towel a wool blanket and that keeps the hot hot and it also keeps your whole body warm. After the five minutes you have your person come over to you with the really cold towel and you replace it. You take off the hot and you immediately put on the really cold towel and that's the part that's really uncomfortable. It's super unpleasant. So I often would have um, some show I'd be watching on Netflix or whatever, and I would set that up as a distraction. Um, when my son has done it, I'll you know find a basketball game for him on YouTube, and he'll watch that. The cool thing about this technique, and I'm going to go into this in a minute, there are so many different uses for it. You can even use it to expedite a flu or a cold, to detoxify the body for general wellness. Um, and the cool thing is it's really safe for all ages. Um, I have read about it in addition to being guided by my practitioner, and this is a very, very safe technique. So it's a great go-to. Um, so anyways, after you do the five of very hot and then you do the cold, you do the cold for 10 minutes, so longer than the hot. You also put a wool blanket over you um, with the cold towel and that keeps the cold towel cold and it keeps your body from getting a chill. After that, you flip onto your belly and you do the exact same thing. So five of hot and then 10 of very cold. Hot then cold sounds horrible. It is horrible. I am just being completely honest. And that's why you have to find some good show that you love watching. And then you actually end up looking forward to hydrotherapy because it's this guilty pleasure. Uh, we talked last week about enemas. Same thing. For anyone who has to do enemas, finding a show on Netflix is the perfect solution. Someone says, would it be effective to just take a hot, hot shower, then switch to cold, cold water? Yes. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, but... I don't know, for those of you who have busy lives, who are moms, who are racing around and barely have a moment to yourselves, hydrotherapy can be a three-week excuse to just pull aside by yourself and have alone time. The actual discomfort of the cold towel only lasts for maybe three to five seconds, and then it's, that's it. You're, you've got the warm towel, the, the bitter cold has gone away, so it's really just the initial shock of when the cold one is put onto you. I saw a movie on Iceland where geothermal baths and, oh, I missed the end of it. Feel free to type that in again. I'm sorry, I missed part of that. But yes, it's, so, it's really exciting to see what different cultures do. So many cultures have figured out this cold treatment is basically shocking the organs into working more efficiently. And, so, and that's the main thing that's happening. It's not a scientific definition, but basically our organs get sluggish and we are mostly water and this hot and cold water treatment, it very much um, stimulates the body to do what it should be doing. Geothermal baths and go from snow to warm bath. Okay, so they do the opposite order, interesting. Thank you for sharing that. So, um, yeah, so as far as using um, the bed method, this is great for like a sick kiddo who may not, you know, want to get into a bath or shower who's just pooped out on the bed. Um, so you can use it for a fever, for the flu, for detoxifying, treating the common cold, constipation, skin issues, gallbladder or kidney issues, any organ dysfunction, liver issues, all of those, this method can be used. Thank you for all those gorgeous hearts, by the way. They are heartwarming. I appreciate them. Just circling back to constipation, if you go to my blog, there is a whole post um, at eatbeautiful.net on constipation and different remedies, and this is one of them that's listed there because it's that effective. If you have serious constipation or you have a child who does, you can do this um, at night. The next morning, I can almost guarantee a bowel movement. 
right when they wake up or right when you wake up or shortly after. It's that effective for stimulating the bowels. Okay, so let's talk about a few other ways to get um, hydrotherapy other than this uncomfortable towel method, which I still give a thumbs up to, but I just know realistically it's not going to be a good fit for everybody. So another one is compresses. Now compresses are specifically for localized areas. Um, so for instance, if you have a headache um, or a fever, then cold compresses are very good for the forehead. Um, um, there are other reasons to put hot compresses on the forehead. Um, if you've had um, mastitis or a sluggish liver or want to do a detox, you've probably heard about um, putting castor oil on a, a washcloth and then putting a heating pad over that on your liver. Um, or I've done it on my breasts multiple times when I was nursing, I would get mastitis and that was an amazingly effective method. I did it for a full 40 minutes, um, the castor oil hot pack, and it would totally clear my ducts from the, from the clogging and the infection too. So compresses are another form of hydrotherapy. Um, baths are another, and we talked about this a little bit last week with enemas, just as far as all the different ways that we can detoxify our body. Um, and I have a post on this on my site, eatbeautiful.net. And so um, I shouldn't go into too, too much length here for those of you who've already heard me talk about it many times, but I'm a huge fan of detoxification baths. And um, it is technically a form of hydrotherapy. Even taking a hot bath, for those of you who are just, for those of you who at the end of the day just love to sink into a hot bath, that is hydrotherapy. Um, but if you stay in that hot bath and then at the end you um, release some of the hot water and you let in a lot of cold water, um, that is even better because that's going to pull toxins out of out through your skin and into the water. It's an excellent form of hydrotherapy. Um, for those of you who have constipation, you might even feel movement in your transverse colon when you let the wa cold water in, which is so cool to actually see your body doing what you've read about. So you know it's supposed to help, and then you add the cold water, and literally you lay back in the cold water, and all of a sudden you feel this gurgle go across your small intestine, or sorry, your transverse colon. It's like, that is so cool, it's working. So your body is actively detoxifying during that process. A couple other ways of um, using hydrotherapy are steam rooms and saunas. Um, so you can detoxify and release impurities through sweating them out. And that is, you know, obviously very similar to the sweat lodges of the Native Americans. So one way that I've implemented this recently, we don't own a um, sauna or a steam room in our home, but my daughter and I joined a gym recently to start swimming. And they have a sauna and a steam room and a jacuzzi. The jacuzzi has chlorine in it, so I don't think of that as a healthy choice, but I go into the steam room for five to 10 minutes and I wait until I can actually see sweat coming out of my pores. So I know I've, I've detoxified some and then I immediately go to the pool and get in. And so I've been in this hot, sweaty environment and then I immediately get into the cold pool. And that is just like easy hydrotherapy because I have to do nothing, no towels, just no labor. And of course the steam room is very relaxing and then we swim and I love that for releasing stress and you know, great exercise and everything. So if you have a gym, that might be a viable option for you. Um, and then according to someone else's question earlier, the last method of hydrotherapy I wanted to mention was the hot shower followed by the cold shower. I know for years this was extremely unappealing to me because a shower for me is a time to not only get clean, but it's a time to relax. And I just feel so good when I'm warm and I'm, I'm kind of... Um, bony and I don't have a lot of muscle in my body so I typically I'm a cold person and I want to be cozy um so I for a long time I held off like I would rather do hydrotherapy you know on my bed with the towels than ruin a good shower but recently at the swimming pool I started going ahead and doing it because I was already in exercise mode my core was so warm from exercising so now when I'm at the gym I shower afterwards I take a hot shower and for the last maybe two minutes I turn the water cold um, and it actually feels great I love it it feels rejuvenating it feels healthy um, and I notice a difference actually so I would recommend that as well and if you're kind of sheepish about having a cold shower you know yeah we've got to be in the right mood it might not be as fitting in the middle of winter but right now when the weather's warming up it's great and I recommend it so that is definitely something you can try as well um, so I just want to hit on three bullet points um, of why hydrotherapy is a good choice and um, also, while I'm doing this, feel free to type into the comments which of these methods that I've 
mentioned do you feel like would be the easiest for you to implement in your life? Are any of these resonating? Like, do you feel like, yeah, I could do that. I see the need. I Actually, that feels realistic. Are any of these realistic for you? Um, and if so, which one? And is it something you think you could see yourself doing it, doing in the long run that you would maintain? Okay, here's the three bullet points I wanted to mention. Um, hydrotherapy is very safe. So I have a conservative doctor. He's a naturopathic doctor, but he's conservative. And I've read online as well, this is safe for kids. This is safe for the elderly. This is safe for invalids. This is safe for everybody. So that's the first reason to do it. Someone says, shower. I rinse my hair in cold water after washing. Great. So you're already doing it. So then the, the you know, emphasis would just be make sure it's hitting your torso, your front, and your back, and that you're, you know, really getting your whole body when you do it. So that's great if you're already doing it for your hair. So the first reason to do it is because it's very safe. I am going to try your towel method, but I think bath shower method more for long term. That sounds perfect. Like what? That's what I do. Shower sounds good or sauna plus pool in the summertime. Someone says, does hydrotherapy help with fibrous cysts on breast areas? Um, that is a great question. I don't know. Um, I have used other methods for that, and I'll just tell you real quick that I used red raspberry leaf for that. You can use a tincture or a tea that you sip throughout the day that have helped mine completely go away. Um, so that's what I would suggest, but it's a good question. I don't know, and I think it's a very good question. It's certainly something to ask a practitioner about, um, and it would probably be safe to try, but I won't, I won't say that since it's a compress um, trying to target a specific health issue. I'm not going to comment on the safety of that, but I would think it would certainly be safe to try. Um, so very safe is number one. Number two is it's affordable. This is free, right? I mean, a lot of times we talk about going to a new doctor for $375 for the first visit, hundreds of dollars worth of supplements, you know, having to buy a grounding sheet. There's all these things to buy, right? Hydrotherapy is free. It is waiting for you. Um, and like I said, it has many different purposes, not just detoxification, although we all need help with that. But I love that it jumpstarts our organs into greater efficiency. Um, that is one of the key goals in wellness, in our wellness journey, is making our organs work the way they once did. So for me, that is really the most important point. And this is an affordable, if not free, way of jumpstarting your organ functions. And then the last reason I want to say it is because it's effective. It works. It's been working for thousands of years. I love that there are still naturopaths out there using this technique. Is it better to do in the morning or evening? It doesn't matter, actually. You can do either one, or it does it not matter. That's right. So, like, when I do the towel method, I do that at night. Um, but when I do the shower method or the steam into our swimming pool at the gym, I do them in the morning. And I definitely see results with both. And some of you know I've struggled with constipation a little bit because I was on such a low... Um, carb diet for so long and now I'm doing great because of my fabulous cassava flour um, but all, these things actually just help my bowels do you swim in a chlorinated pool I swim in a 50% salt water pool so it's not perfect and um, I hold it loosely I actually love it so much that I um, I just <laughs> I'm so grateful but I'm very acutely aware that there is some chl chlorine in the water so our long-term goal is actually to buy one of those um, pools that are very small that have a jet um, that you can put in your own home. We um, are building a tiny house, so it has a very small budget. And these um, home swimming pools that are teeny um, are on eBay and Craigslist all the time because people buy them and then they don't end up using them. And so then they sell them used. And so we've seen many of them go by. And so when we're ready and we're getting close and we have our courtyard built or whatever with our tiny house, that's our current plan is to buy one of those little teeny pools um, that has the jet that moves the water um, and put 100% salt water into it. So for now, I'm doing 50-50, but in the long run, that's not obviously good for my skin um, to absorb that. Okay, so any other questions or comments? Um, I was just closing on the point of how effective this method is, and if you feel like you need healing, I would highly encourage you experimenting with one of these methods. Um, do you also mitigate chlorine in your home bath and shower water? We do. Actually, in our case, we live out in the country. We've had our water tested, and we have good water, and we're on a well. So we're thankful we don't have to worry about that. And then at work, we have a cafe in town in Eugene, Oregon, and um, we have a filter on one of our taps, not all of them, and that's the one that, you know, when we're, we're obviously when we are going to ingest the water, we use that tap. 
Um, I used to be so sensitive that even washing my hands with chlorine would make them break out in blisters. And um, so it was really hard to go to work because so many of the taps didn't have filters on them. So I'm pretty careful to go to the tap that does have the filter. It really is a serious issue. Um, so thanks for asking. We all can have heightened awareness of that. And it's, it's really sad and hard that so much city water is chlorinated these days. All right, thank you everyone for all the beautiful hearts. I hope that you will um, implement hydrotherapy in your life, that you'll choose one of these methods that feels realistic to you um, and that it will bless your health the same way that it has blessed mine. So thanks again for tuning in. I hope you have a lovely Wednesday. I will see you next week, same place, same time, 10.30 Pacific Standard Time, um, 1.30 Eastern Standard, Standard Time um, for next week's Periscope. All right. Cheers, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.